Welcome back to In Response EDH. My name is Albert, and today we have another great gameplay video for you. I'll be going first in this game, and I'm playing Yannette. My opening hand consists of Sensei's Divining Top, Blatant Thievery, Elish Norn Grand Cinnabite, Thief of Sanity, Flooded Strand, Sunken Hollow, and a Snow Covered Plains. Up next we have Matt, and he brought Adrix and Nev, Twin Casters. He chooses the Mulligan down to 6, and keeps a Kadama's Reach, Fairy Artisans, Beast Within, Bark Channel Pathway, Temple of Mystery, Forest, and sends back an Uktabi Orangutan. Going third is Jose, and he brought Alicia, who smiles at death. He keeps an opening hand of Viscera Seer, Swords to Plowshare, Ransack the Lab, Gisela, Blade of Gold Knight, Bolt of Champions, Slayer Stronghold, and a Battlefield Forge. Going last is Sam, and he brought Azor, the Lawbringer, with him. He decides to keep an opening hand of Soul Ring, Azoria Signet, Solemn Simulacrum, Thassa Deep Dwelling, Irrigated Farmland, an Island, and a Plains. With the introductions out of the way, let's start the game. I start us off by dropping a Flooded Strand, paying one life to sacrifice it, to search up an untapped, hallowed fountain, paying two life. I tap it to cast Sensei's Divining Top, and pass the mat. Matt drops a tapped Temple of Mystery, scries one, and decides to keep it on top, and passes to Jose. Jose plays a Vault of Champions, taps it for black mana, and casts a Viscera Seer, and then ends his turn. Sam starts his turn by playing a Plains, tapping it to cast a Soul Ring, taps the Soul Ring to cast an Azorius Signet. I untap and draw for turn, and start by activating my Sensei's Top to look at the top three cards and rearrange them. I then drop a tapped Sunken Hollow and pass to Matt. Matt starts his turn by playing a Forest as his land for turn, taps two mana, and casts a Scavenging Ooze. Jose untaps and draws for turn. He drops a Battlefield Forge, taps it, and casts a Soul Ring. He moves to combat and swings at me for one with his Viscera Seer. On his second main phase, Jose spends two mana to cast Ransack the Lab. Looking at the top three cards of his library, putting one in his hand, and two into his graveyard. After that, he ends his turn. Sam draws a card and drops an island on the field. He taps four to cast Solemn Simulacrum and searches up an island to the battlefield tap and passes to me. I untap, draw a card for turn, play a snow-covered island as my land drop and spend all my mana to cast a Thief of Sanity. With nothing else to do, I pass to Matt. Matt plays a Bark Channel Pathway and taps 3 to cast Kadama's Reach, finding an island for the field and a forest to his hand. He then ends his turn. Jose untaps and draws, and drops a tapped Hollow the Bandit Lord on the battlefield. He spends 3 mana to cast Painful Lesson, drawing 2 cards and losing 2 life, and ends his turn. Sam starts by playing a Reliquary Tower, taps 6 mana to cast his commander, Azor the Lawbringer. He then passes back to me. I start turn 4 by activating Sensei's top and tapping it because I'm a terrible magical player. I then play a tapped Tempo of Enlightenment and scribe my top card to the bottom of my library. After that, I cast a Swift Foot Boots. I then move to combat and swing my Thief of Sanity at Matt. When it deals damage, I get to look at the top three cards of Matt's library and exile one and can cast it as long as it's in exile. Matt starts by drawing a card and playing a forest. He moves into his combat phase and attacks me for two with the ooze. On his second main phase, he casts a Paradox Zone, which enters with one counter on it. On his end step, he doubles the amount to two and creates a 2-2 two -two Fractal Token. Zero that gets counters, and I'm done. So right, then it gets two counters on it. You have yep. Solemnity in your deck, right? <laughs> Honestly, that card is pretty good. Jose starts his turn by tapping three taking one from his forge to cast his commander, Alesha, who smiles at death.
He then plays a tapped blood crypt before passing the turn. Sam untaps all his permanents and draws for turn. He plays an irrigated farmland and moves to combat. He swings his commander at Jose, who responds by casting a Swords to Plowshare on Azor, forcing Sam to respond with a Cryptic Command, choosing the mode's counter target spell and draw a card. Jose takes 6 and drops to 31. With nothing else, he passes to me. I untap and draw. I play a Murkwater Pathway as my land drop, then move into combat and swing my Thief at Matt. Again, looking at his top three cards and exiling one. On my second main phase, I cast the card I exiled, which was a Sylvan Library. I spend the rest of my time equipping the Thief with the boots and pass the turn. Matt begins his turn by playing Navigin, Heart of Progress, as his land for turn. He moves into combat and swings both creatures at me, dealing 4 damage. He follows that up by casting Perplexing Test, returning all non-token creatures to their owner's hands. Non-token non -token creatures. Non-token creatures. He goes to his end step and doubles the counters on Paradox Zone and creates a 4-4 Fractal Token. Jose untaps and draws a card. He plays a Slayer's Stronghold as his land for turn and spends two black mana to cast Sign in Blood, drawing two cards and losing two life. He then casts a Keeper of the Cord and ends his turn. Sam starts his turn by dropping a Plains on the battlefield and recasting Solemn Simulacrum, which allows him to search up another island to the battlefield. He follows that up by casting a Thassa Deep Dwelling. On his end step, he blinks the sad robot with Thassa, searching up another land to the battlefield. And since he controls more lands than Jose, Jose gets to search for a plains with the Keeper of the Accord. I start my turn by drawing three cards with the Sylvan Library, and choosing to draw one extra, paying four life. I play a command tower as my land for turn and pay 5 to cast my commander, Yannette, Cryptic Sovereign. I pay 1 to equip her with the boots and move to combat, swinging her at Sam for 3 damage. At this point we notice Matt hasn't been marking down his life loss from the earlier attacks by the Thief of Sanity and correct it. Yannette's attack trigger happens and I reveal a Void Winnower off the top of my deck, casting it for free. I then move to my end step, and Jose creates a 1-1 Soldier token with the Keeper of the Accord. Matt untaps, draws, and plays a Yavamaya Coast as his land for turn, and taps 3 mana to cast a Beast Within, targeting the Void Winnower, destroying it and giving me a 3-3 Beast. He then moves to combat, and swings a 4-4 Fractal token at Jose. Jose chooses not to block and takes the damage. Matt follows that up by casting his commander, Adrix and Nev, Twin Caster. He moves to his end step and creates an 8 8 Fractal token. Jose then searches up a plains and creates a 1 1 Soldier token thanks to the Keeper of the Accord. Jose drops a Swamp on the field and casts Gisela, Blade of Gold Knight. He pays 3 life to give her haste with the Hall of the Bandit Lord, then moves into combat and swings Gisela at me. I choose not to block and take 10 damage. On his second main phase, he recasts his commander, Alesha, and ends his turn. Sam starts his turn untapping and drawing his card. Jose lets the table know he's almost out of basics. Yeah, I'm only going to get one more base, basic plan, so it's not going to be... Haha, -ha, I exhausted his value. Yeah. <laughs> All part of my plan. Yeah. <laughs> Sam taps 6 
to recast his commander, Azor. He then taps 3 to cast Heuristic Study. On his end step, he flickers the sad robot again with Thassa to get another land onto the battlefield. And Jose gets his last basic. I start turn 7 by drawing 3 cards, but only choosing to keep one of them. I cast a Mana Crypt, not paying for the Rhystic Study Tax. I'm paying 7 for an Agent of Treachery. I choose to gain control of Sam's Thassa. I then use my last remaining mana to use a Sensei's Top to rearrange the top 3 cards of my deck. I move to combat and swing at Jose for 1 damage and reveal a mana drain that goes straight into my hand. On my end step, I use Thassa to flicker the agent and choose to steal Matt's 8-8 Fractal Token. Matt begins his turn, untapping and drawing. And tapping 4 for a Fairy Artisans. Then moves to his end step and creates a 16-16 Fractal Token and passes. Jose pays one black mana to recast the Viscera Seer. When it enters, Matt makes two copies of it with the Fairy Artisans. Oh wait, do you only one of them go away? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I like that! <laughs> no. Jose then cast a murderous red cap, which makes Matt two copies, losing one of his seers. When his red caps enter, he chooses to deal four damage to my agent, thanks to Gisela doubling the damage, and uses his second to deal one damage to Viscera Seer. In response, Jose sacks a knight to scry one and puts it on the bottom, and sacks the seer to itself to scry one more, keeping it on top. Jose targets the fairies with his red cap trigger, but in response, Matt casts a Lazotep Plating to give all his permanents hexproof till end of turn, and amassing a 1-1 zombie army. Jose then moves to combat and swings Alesha at Sam and Gisela at Matt. Sam decides to block with his sad robot, drawing him a card. Matt does not block and takes 10 damage. Jose pays the cost to bring back the seer from the graveyard with Alesha's attack ability but forgets it's supposed to enter the battlefield tapped in attacking. This creates two more Seers on Matt's side of the board. After that, Jose ends his turn. On Sam's upkeep, Jose chooses to use the Seer to sacrifice the Red Cap, which gives Matt two more Red Caps, and deals two damage to the Fairy Artisans with his murderous Red Cap. Matt chooses to point his damage at Alicia, destroying them. Sam plays a port town revealing a planes, having it come in untapped, and moves straight into combat. I'll hit you for 12. Sure. Take it. Um, I'm also going to activate its ability. Sure. Which is... Uh, we'll die, Sam. Cool. Sphinx's Revelation for 6. Yep. I'll gain 6 and draw 6. With a handful of gas, Sam decides to cast Capture of Jing Zhao to take an extra turn. With nothing else, he passes to himself. Sam starts his extra turn by playing another planes and spends three mana to cast Sword of Feast and Famine and another two mana to equip the sword to his commander. He moves to combat. I'm gonna kill you. Sure. Oops. Uh, and then I'm going to do the thing again. Okay. Yeah. One, mm -hmm. two, three, four. Jose has some kind words for Matt on his way out. Good game, Matt. Good. Sam chooses to pay seven into Azor's ability to draw seven and gain seven. Since his commander dealt damage with the sword, Sam is allowed to untap all his lands on his second main phase. He then pays five to cast a temporal manipulation 
to take another turn. Sam moves to his next extra turn and plays a Sajiri Refuge and follows that up by casting an Archaeomancer to return temporal manipulation to his hand. Soul That's Herder. Soul Herder? Yep. You just keep getting, uh, keep getting it, keep attacking, gain yeah. a bunch of life, kill you all. Solid. You're good. You're good. And, I, and I have Force of Will just in case. Yeah. Congratulations to Sam on his first channel win. By his own admission, he kept a fast, do-nothing hand, but it paid off for him since Matt had been the threat at the table for the better part of the game. In the end, the fact that he was able to use his commander to draw into his win cons really sealed the deal for him. Well, that's a wrap on episode 14. We here at InResponse would like to thank you for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe, and make sure you follow us on our social medias. We also stream every Friday night at 7pm Pacific Standard Time. Thank you for watching. Have an awesome day.